It's part five of our conversation with Steve Lukather. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Joshua Katz asks, were there, were there tunes, there's got to be tunes that you released and you go, you got a winner here, and for whatever reason, it, it didn't become a hit. I mean, we can easily talk about the hits, but we don't have to. I've already talked about the hits with you. Uh, what songs that were out there that you you just were surprised that misfired? Oh, there was stuff off Isolation, like Endless or Angel Don't Cry, which I thought for sure would, would have been hits, but we were getting a lot of shit at rock radio. They just wouldn't look at us after Africa's hit and all the ballads. They just didn't consider us a rock band, so they discarded our music, and then the press did not help our agenda in that department. 45 years later, I'm still trying to fight. It's like, why don't you just come see the band once before you think we're just Africa? Because that's the least a representative song of what we do, and I, I think. I mean, it's a it's a it's a kitschy little gift that we've been given. And it's the I mean, I don't make any money off of it, just uh David and Jeff Picaro. Because they wrote the song and whoever publishing deals they may have made that I am not privy to. A little blues, nice heart of soul and serpent soul. I one of my favorite tracks off this album. Thanks, man. Well that's like true tribute to little feet, you know. They don't get enough love. I mean, I was the whole album is based upon my love for the early 70s music, you know, and that I wanted to make the recordings like that, but with 2021 sound, you know, so I wanted to keep the looseness of live recording, live solos. Everything's all live there. I overdubbed the vocals the same day. So we did the album in eight days, song a day, and then we mixed it. We did a few overdubs after because we only did like two takes, one, one through the chart and the second one, everybody got it and we nailed it. We got the takes fast. We were able to, is anybody here an overdub? Or I'd over double the guitar part, or then I'd start the lead vocal. And Joseph took it home and did some background vocals for me. It was done. You know, I wanted to see if I could still do it like that. No click tracks, no rehearsals and demos and stuff. I want to see, you hire the guys and let's see what happens. Because that's what we used to do for a living. And nobody does like long fades where the same lick doesn't come around every time. People are jamming and I left it long, you know. And I want to pay tribute to a few people that inspired me that were obscure covers and stuff like that. And the Joe Walsh song from So What, 1970. Well, he's one of my favorite heroes of all time. I love Joe. Nobody ever covers Joe Walsh tunes except the obvious ones. And this is not an obvious one. I played it for him, and he, and he sent me back a note going, A++++, plus 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 killer. <laughs> I, I like I the way you sing on that. that. I like the way you sing on that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I had to kind of give a wink to it, but I didn't want to do a bad impression of Joe. You know, he said, I love him too much for that. Uh, someone had asked, do you remember the, if that's what it takes sessions from uh, Michael McDonald? What was that like? I know that you were. Great. Those were great sessions. Great vibe. Great people. Great producers and Don Landy's engineering. And Michael had great songs. And <clears throat> nothing was more than one or two takes. It was effortless. We just, it just gelled. It was just, and every day it was a joy to show up. Michael's brilliant. I love Michael McDonald. I love everything about him. And working with Teddy and uh, Michael, you know, I mean, that was really cool. You know, um, what do you call it? Uh, the producers, Ted Templeman and uh, Lenny Warnaker, you know, they were producing that. 